What's going on guys? TJ here with Kayak USA. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to put a dry battery storage bank on your kayak with USB ports. Check it out. After watching a lot of YouTube videos, I found a couple of different uh, ways I wanted to go about adding power to my new 2017 Vibe Seaghost 130. And I found this really cool idea on YouTube. Uh, I'll put a link to the guy's video. I don't know the guy personally, but he kind of uh, nudged me in the right direction to get what I got. And I'm also going to add links in the bottom of this video in the description to everything that I bought and put in today. And it's surprisingly very cheap to add power with USB ports to your kayak and if you do it right it, it, it's not very heavy and you can unhook it and take it out you know if you gotta load your kayak on top of a truck or something you don't want everything bouncing around so anyway I'm gonna show you what I got when you get it from Amazon it'll come like this with all the connectors and it's very cool and by the way I've never done this before so we're gonna do it together on video so if I mess up we'll know but this is what it looks like when you get it it's got a double USB port and everything's got a watertight seal and it has a 1 amp and a 2.1 amp. It's got the voltage meter in the middle and on this side, if I can get it open, it's got a cigarette lighter. And my original plan was, which is, I mean it's mainly mostly the same plan I have now, but this measures out, I'm not sure exactly what it measures, but it fits right here on the dash if you guys can see that let's see it's gonna fit right here on the the little angle dash part of my kayak so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill holes and install this right here and we're gonna contain the battery inside the hole of the kayak watertight seal everything and this way you've got a you've got your phone chargers and you've got your cigarette lighters for adding uh, fish finders a lot of people like to use cigarette lighters for their fish finders because they can just unplug it and take their fish finder completely off the kayak when they want to. I'm going to go a different route and you're going to see that when I install my fish finder. But today we're just going to drill holes and we're going to add the battery. We're going to do all the wiring and we're going to, by the time this video is over, I'm going to have two USB ports and a cigarette lighter and a voltage meter in my kayak. Let's do this. Okay, so this is everything I got, and like I said, I will be putting a link in the description. Everything you see here can be purchased on Amazon. I bought everything here on Amazon except for the dry box. Uh, I had this same exact dry box in my cart. It's only $9, $9 and something. It was going to take forever to ship. I, I think it's because I went with the orange. The blue was in stock. So I just canceled the order and swung by Walmart after I got off work the other day and just picked up the, the one I wanted. It's the same price at Walmart. But the battery is the Expert Power battery. Got it on Amazon. It's dirt cheap, very cheap. This I just showed you earlier. This is the, uh, the onboard power hookup, power supply. This is a five-way adapter and you're going to see later why I chose to go with this. We're going to hook this into the battery and we're going to have us five different attachments to go out to other things that we want to add later without having to plug everything into our onboard compartment. These are two accessory extensions. They're flat and all they are, I'm going to go ahead and open one and show you. I bought these not to use as extensions but I'm going to cut these right in the middle and these can be either, either or adapters so we can cut this in the middle and have two plugs in one and it's very cheap I bought two of them I think I'm gonna end up with an extra one for maybe a, a later project and these here are plugs that will drill a hole in our dry box and the wires can come out of and it will water tight right on the side so if water does get in our kayak which if you got water getting in your kayak you got a worse problem than that but if you use the drop this or whatever in water Water is not going to get in here and short out your battery or mess your battery up. And these are very cheap. Like if you was to just buy one or two of these, it would cost more. But you can get a pack of, I think, these is 20 and it's assorted sizes. So, and these were dirt cheap. I can't remember the exact prices, but I'll show you in the description on the link. And last but not least, I've got 
Velcro tape. And the Velcro tape is what I'm going to use to put on the bottom of my battery, ba uh, battery box in my kayak to keep it from sliding around in my kayak. So you guys, I can't remember how long this is, but you'll, you'll see all in the description when I put the links. But this is all I got. And of course, you know, it's going to take a drill and, and some, maybe some more connectors. But this, this actually come with its own wires and pigtails. So what you do is, I mean, you just, I'm going to have two wires coming off the battery and they're going to go to the first one and then they're just going to pigtail the positive and negative. It even has it, you know, it's idiot proof. Let's see if I can get in here positive and negative for each port it's it's kind of thick plastic it doesn't look very very cheap I mean it, it was very cheap but it doesn't seem like it's a extremely you know crappy product so we're gonna find out uh, I've done a lot of research on it before I ordered it and everybody seems to be happy with it I mean it's just basically some power hookups but it's gonna come in very handy whenever you know your your phone's dying or something you can just charge your phone up on the kayak that's going to be awesome I can't wait to have this on there so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to measure these and we're going to cut three holes in the kayak and make sure that these fit straight through there but I think that you just unscrew one of these and you can use this as a stencil maybe Let's find out together. And they have O-rings on them, it looks like, so. And you can switch these up, too, is what's cool about it, because they're all the same size. If you want the voltage meter on one side and your two power ports on the other, or you can order this without the cigarette lighter plug and have USB ports on both sides. It's, it's really cool, really good idea. So see, this just comes out like this. And once we have the holes cut out, which we're going to be able to bolt this up and use it as a stencil on the kayak, I'm assuming. And we're just going to slide these in and then we're going to reach in the kayak and screw them on the back, tighten everything down and get it exactly how we want it. I am going to use some silicone once we get this plate mounted because there's some slots cut out. I don't know if you can tell, but you see here there's a slot and the slot is up under each one of these. I'm not sure what that's for. But I am going to make sure that those slots, there's only slots on one side. The top doesn't have them. I'm going to make sure those slots are on the bottom and not the top for rainwater so it doesn't get in. But I'm also going to use silicone and I'm going to seal all the way around this. So. All right, so let's, uh, let's get started on this project, I guess. All right, so I guess the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take these out. And we're going to get it on here and I'm going to get a level and we're going to make sure that where I'm putting this is going to be very level. And I do want to say this. I'm going to be adding a fish finder to this kayak. And I'm going to do a full install video on this fish finder. I just ordered myself the new Hook 2 5 split shot. It's uh, supposed to be bad to the bone. There's, and I'm noticing that the, it's, it's so new that there's not a lot of reviews on it. So I'm going to do a full unboxing review and install on this kayak. It'll be after this video. I wanted to get the power added first. But the reason I'm saying that is this hole right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a hole here on this Vibe Seaghost, which is extremely awesome, I think, because this is a uh, transducer hole. So my transducer, I want it to come, my wires are going to come out of my depth finder into my kayak. And then I just want the single transducer wire coming out because I don't want to miss. And I want it to come out and go straight down into my this hole here. And then, you know, the transducer is going to be in the, in the spot on the bottom of this kayak. There's actually a molded recessed with a plate over it just for, you know, it's already threaded and everything just for transducers. So the reason I'm telling you all this is because when I put this on here, I want to make sure that I've got a spot under this if I go too low then I'm gonna to have to come out above it with my transducer wire and I don't want to come out above it because then the wire is just gonna come right across on top of this and it's gonna be in my way and it's just really gonna bug me so I'm gonna go as high as I can also you know you can only go so high because you've got to make sure that you got the clearance on the inside of your kayak because these are gonna you know these are gonna be sticking through pretty far and you just want to make sure you got the clearance on the inside of the kayak I think I've got plenty of room in there 
but we're going to double check. I just want to leave myself enough room because I know that in the future I'm going to have a port coming out right up under here going to my transducer hole. Alright, so now I'm just going to take and put the, the plate on here. I'm going to measure both sides and from the top all the way across and make sure that I got a good spot. But first we're going to go inside the kayak and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to have room and I'm going to have room inside this kayak. Because, I mean, these are kind of long. I mean, they're not extremely long, but I think that I'm going to have, I think I'm going to be okay no matter what, because these are going to sit out here. And they're going to be at an angle. I think I can go pretty high. And then the, the bottom one is going to be right in there somewhere. I got a measuring tape, and I got a sharpie. So I am going to try to measure off and get this as center as possible and what I'm doing is I'm measuring from each side to make sure that it's about the same so over here I have about an inch and I want it to be even across the top too three quarters three quarters We've got the holes marked. Can you see these holes? I hope that I'm getting all this on the camera for you. So I've got three holes marked, but when you mark it with a Sharpie, you gotta realize that the Sharpie, the thickness of the tip of the Sharpie is actually gonna set you off. And if you was to cut these holes out, there's no way these are gonna fit in there because the hole is actually gonna be smaller. So what I'm thinking about doing is I, I'm gonna get a paddle bit that is the same width as this and I'm gonna go dead center of each one of these circles and I'm just gonna use the paddle bit to go straight through. So let's do that. Let me get the paddle bit. This hole and the width of this is just under an inch and a quarter. My paddle bits are inch, my, my biggest two are an inch and then an inch and a quarter and the actual size that would be perfect for it is somewhere in between inch and inch and a quarter. I did check the, the back. I think inch and a quarter is going to be perfectly okay. It's, it's going to be a little bit bigger than I wanted, but I'm still going to silicone it anyway. And plus, that will give us a little bit of room to uh, move the plate around. If, if I'm kind of crooked or anything, I'll have a little bit of play there so we can straighten everything up and lock it down with screws at the end. So I'm going to go with inch and a quarter paddle bit, and I'm going to drill the center out of each of these holes for the install. So let's do that. First I'm taking a, a small bit and I'm just going to center a hole for a little pilot hole so that I, the paddle bit don't walk around with me. Let's move this console out of my way. I can't believe I'm drilling holes in my brand new cut. I just eyeballed those, so I hope that that's right. I'm trying not to get too technical. I mean, this is. This is supposed to be an easy do-it-yourself video DIY, so now here comes the big hole. First big freaking hole in my kayak. I'm 
let's see how this is going to line up. Alright, so I'm going to put the voltmeter in the middle. Power port. USB ports. My battery died on the camera, so I had to change it out real quick. Well, I got all three holes drilled, and now we have our dash plate in. Everything seems good. I haven't opened the front hatch yet to see if we're going to have any issues, but I don't think we're going to. Oh no, we're good, we're good. Now that I've got everything in here and centered up really well, I'm gonna get some silicone and we're gonna seal this up and lock everything down really tight and make sure it's perfectly centered. And then we're gonna go inside the front hatch and we're gonna build our watertight battery box and we're gonna get everything hooked up and I'm gonna take you guys inside the kayak to check it all out. All I got is some, this is what I use on everything to seal it up. It's all purpose, 100% silicone. I always try to get 100% silicone. And what I did is I put the nuts on the back of this uh, panel on each one of these and I left them really loose so that I can pull this panel out. And I'm just gonna put a really thick bead all the way around the, the panel before I screw it down, before I tighten anything up. Then I'm gonna tighten everything up really good and snug everything down. We're going to go back and wipe off any of the excess silicone that squirts out around the edges. And that should give it a good watertight seal. So let's do this. All right, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna wipe off all the way around this. I'm gonna leave the silicone right now that's wet sticking out of the screw holes because I want I want that silicone in those holes when I lock this thing down. That'll give it a little bit of extra seal there. This, this plate did come with four screws. Um, I mean, they just look like regular. They're, they look like they're black oxide, I don't know these are made, I believe, for boats, so I'm hoping that these are galvanized under that black to make sure that they're not going to rust. We'll find out. Now I'm just going to drill each hole straight in there. I'm not going to drill a pilot hole because I want as much seal as I can. If I drill a pilot hole and then drill these screws in there, uh, it's going to open it up for you know more water to get in. We're just going to have silicone already poking out anyway, so we're going to screw, screw these in, wipe off all the silicone, and we'll be good on the outside. So now that we got our front panel on, we've got all four screws in, we've got it silicone, we've got everything tight, we're going to move back to the bench and we're going to build the watertight battery bank box and put up all the connections. So all we have to do is install it and plug it up to this and we're ready to start hooking our, hooking our devices up. Let's move to the bench. Alright, so we're over here at the workbench now and we've got our dry storage box, we've got all our connectors and wires and battery to turn this dry storage box into our battery bank box for our kayak and our goal is to be able to take this whole box in and out of the kayak whenever we're done fishing or if we want to charge our battery up uh, the goal is to just be able to be as universal as possible we want to be able to take this thing out and we also want to be able to have easy quick connections to all of our devices so what i'm going to do is we're going to figure out how we want to put the battery inside this box but if you notice there's a lot of play I had an idea earlier, I don't, if you uh, haven't seen my kayak deck mat video where I teach you how to do the stenciling and cut out your own deck mat for your kayaks, uh, go check that out when you get a chance, it's a pretty good video. I'll put a link somewhere in here or somewhere in here for it. But I have leftover deck mat from that build and I think that I can take the deck mat, put it, line the inside of this box and make it more cushion and less slop around in here. So I'm going to grab that and we're going to stencil it out and throw it in there real quick.
what I'm talking about. This is what I've got left over. It's uh, peel back, sticky on the back. This is actually called deck mat. I ordered it. Uh, I got the link in the in my other video. I've got a link. If I can remember, I'll put a link to it in this video. But all it is is just a kayak deck pad, and you you cut it out any shape you want or any shape you need for your kayak, and you you know you put a stencil down, cut it, and you put it down. It's got a peel back and it's really sticky. I don't know if it's 3M or what, but it's, it's really sticky. So my thought is, is I'm gonna cut it, cut it out and we're gonna put some in here and line this up. And if you don't have this, you don't have to use this. You can use any kind of foam. Uh, you can get those plastic, the, the foam swim noodles, uh, you know, the kids use in the pool. You could cut those up and put them in here just to keep the battery from slopping around. All right, now we've got the battery box completely padded all the way around. We've got Velcro on the back of the battery. I put Velcro on the back of this battery and it's stuck. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's a strip. I just got one strip stuck there and it keeps the battery from going forward. Now you can still get the, you can still get the battery out when you need to. You just peel it off. But then when you want to put it back in the dry box, you just drop it in and slide it over and stick it real good to the Velcro and then it, and it holds it. It's padded really good. So now it's not moving around like, like it did earlier. So now we're gonna add our port and we're gonna run our wires in here and get everything hooked up to the battery so we're gonna have our ports coming out the side of this dry box. Now here's where these come into play. I've got the single one that I showed you earlier. It's flat to flat, they hook together. This is just an extension but we're gonna cut it and we're gonna use it for the battery. And then I've got this five-way adapter. Now this five-way adapter, you could have just don't gone with one. If you only plan on putting uh, one device on your boat, if you're not going to have like separate plugs like I have, all you need is just, just one of these. You don't have to buy this five-way adapter. The reason I got the five-way is because I want to have different options inside my boat so that I'm not plugging everything up to the cigarette lighter and the USB ports that's on my dash panel now. If I want to hide wires or add lights later, I can plug them on the inside of the boat straight to the battery bank without having all these wires you know, coming in and out of the hole of my boat. I'm going to have one hole going in and that's it. So this is, this is my plan. This is what I came up with that I wanted to do and I'm sure I'm not the first to come up with it. They sell these things for a reason. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this one here and we're going to cut it in the middle. I'm going to put two connectors on here, these butt connectors. And these are going to plug, plug to our battery. It's a good idea when you cut this to make sure that you're, going, you're cutting it dead center. Because you, you want the same amount to be able to be used later. If you cut it too short, you might not be able to use the other side. So I'm just going to fold it in half. Cut it like that. Turn two into one, one into two, baby. All right, trash goes over there. I'm gonna strip the ends off of this so I can put it in our connector. Now, when you you get the connector like this, all you're gonna do is after you cut about you know about that much, it's gonna go up in there really good. Just kind of twist it and get all your wires together so they're not going to spin out and then you're just going to slide it in the connector until it stops and you got to have a good set of crimpers i've had these forever these are like my favorite crimpers but all you're going to do is drop it in in there like that make sure your wire is still slid all the way up and crimp it in there and the reason I'm not putting any waterproofing or heat shrink on this is because this connection is going to be inside my battery bank. This, this connector is going to be what I use on the battery directly to the battery itself inside the dry box. So I'm not worried about this getting water on it. If there's water getting on this inside the dry box, I've got other problems. And there we go. We've got our connector with our two connectors on the end. And then we're hooked to the battery. I hooked the red wire to the positive and the white wire to the negative. It's easy to keep up with that way. As you're going and adding things on down, you know that 
that's going to be your hot and that's going to be your ground. We got our wires through the end of our little fixture here. This little fixture is the PG9 is what we're going with. So if you buy the same bag of everything that I got, you're going to go with a PG9. And I'm going to run the red and the white wire through this cap and then we're going to drill a hole in the side of our dry box right here. And this cap is going to go, you're going to take this end and go from the inside and then you're going to feed the wires through with this cap on it. And then you're going to tighten it down and when you tighten it down, this compresses on the wires and, tight, and makes a watertight seal right inside of the box. And then we're going to have an outlet sticking out the side of the box that is sealed, connected to the batteries, in which we're going to hook our 5 way adapter. I'm going to go with a 5 8 paddle bit and we're just going to go straight through the side of the box. She is definitely not a dry box anymore. Alright, so get done. Now we've got a big hole in the side of our dry box. Now we've got the adapter screwed in. You can see, let's see if I can get a good angle on it. It screws in there. We've got that. And now if you can see the front of this, this is squishy all the way around. It's like it's like got slits all the way around. So when we start tightening that next one down which is this one here. These wires are going to feed in here one at a time. And there you go. There's, there's my box. It's got a good seal. You can see it, it clamped down on them pretty good. And I'll probably end up still taking some silicone and sticking it in there just to make it even better watertight. And I'll go with some silicone around the outside of this. But we've got our plug that's going to come out. And we've got our plugs that are going to connect to the battery. And this is what it should look like when you get done. I'll probably end up taking a piece of foam, something thick, and just squeezing it down in here to give it an even better you know stability so it's not jumping around or if it, the velcro is holding really good but if it was to give out it would slide around so you know just a little, little extra precaution but now we have a dry box dry battery storage box and we've got our power coming out of it here's our five way four going out one going in there's our battery box connected with our four ways that are going to go out and these are the wires that come with our dash you notice you got a black and you got a wire that th these are already jumped which is really really cool so you know how I said we're gonna it's, uh, we're gonna pigtail from one to the other from starting from you know one side and going all the way across with our hot wires and our negative. Well it comes with them already pigtailed like that so all you have to do is put whichever connectors you're going to use which in our case we're going to use one of these connectors because it's going to plug to one of these ports going to our battery box. So before we have to before we go inside the kayak and hook up the wires we can go ahead and get these connections done get them together so when we get in there we can just plug and go. Let's do that. All right, so some of the things I'm going to use to, to do this connection is stuff that I already had here, and I figured I would just show you what I'm using. You can use different things to do this, but we, we have a Harbor Freight near here, and I go and I get a bunch of their, their real cheap stuff. But this is uh, just a bunch of little pieces of heat shrink that are different sizes. And all it is is, you know, you know heat shrink. It slides after you hook your wires together. You slide it on your wires first. Don't forget that. But then uh, you slide it down, you hook your wires together, and then you slide this over your connector and heat it with like a lighter or heat heat gun, and it'll shrink it up, and it'll give it a water seal. You can use these these connectors uh, on each side, and then just tape it up if you wanted to do it. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with these butt connectors, the 14 to 16 gauge. And all these butt connectors are is just a straight through. 
Let's see if I can find the camera here. They're straight through. You hook one end to another, clamp them, <laughs> drop them, clamp them, and then seal them up with the heat shrink. So I'm going to go ahead and get my heat shrink slid down because I'm very forgetful when it comes to that. I'm just going to trim off the end of our connector that we're going to use. Once you get that, go ahead and slide your heat shrink over. If you can see what I'm doing here, I hope you can. Slide your heat shrink over. This is black, so this is going to go to our white on our plug because it is going to be our ground, our negative terminal. Slide it all the way in and make sure it's seated good on both ends. Get a good grip on it. And I, like, I, like, I don't go straight to the centering clamp. I like to clamp towards the edge of each side first. So I'll go over there and clamp. Then I'll come up to this end and clamp. And then I move to the center. Tug on it, make sure it's not gonna come out. Slide your heat shrink over. And then We'll do the next one and then we'll heat them both together. Now you can use a heat gun or a lighter on this. I've got a heat gun. So I'm just going to plug up the heat gun right here. And we're going to seal this up really good. So just make sure you're, you slide the heat shrink and you get it pretty center over your connectors. And then we're just going to heat them evenly all the way around. And you got them connected really good. I'm really picky, so I'm going to actually go back and I'm going to electrical tape over top of this heat shrink and it's going to give it just an, an added bit of seal. You don't have to. And when you use the heat shrink, this is going to seal it really well, but like I said, I'm really picky. Now we have our plug that's going to go to our battery and we can just plug these up to our dashboard all the way across. Now I'm going to take you guys inside the kayak and we're going to hook everything up and see how it works. Okay, I apologize for the lighting, uh, but we're inside the kayak right now. If you can see, I've got all, you can see all three of my ports going across here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this one and I'm going to hook the positive and the negative, and then we're just going to use the daisy chain and we're going to go on across. So I can see that this is the positive and then this is the negative, and then you got negative, positive, negative, positive. So I'm going to start over here and we're just going to hook them up. But when you get, when you get done, this is basically what it's going to look like. They're just going to be daisy chained all the way across, and then you're going to have your plug hanging at the end. We're going to put the battery box in and plug this up and see if we got power. Well, it looks like it worked. As you can see, we have power. It's reading 12.6 to 12.7 volts. When you open up the USB port side, you can see the blue light is lit up showing that we do have power. And then we've got our cigarette lighter plugged to the other side. Everything has a good watertight seal, but now we're going to do the test. We're going to see if it'll, we can charge the phone. Make sure everything's working. Let's plug it up in the 2.1 amp. It's funny, there's only two ways that you can put a USB in, and it always takes me three tries to get. All right, cross your fingers. She's charging. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like up close. Check it out. Here's what she looks like up close. As you can see, it's got a good digital readout. Everything looks really good. Everything's really solid. Well, there you have it, guys. I've got a battery bank on my kayak with USB ports. I hope this video helped you. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button below for more of my future DIY videos and my adventure videos. Catch you next time.